It's difficult when we lose our friends, but this is life and death. They go hand in hand. And the journey is one that we are largely not in control of. We don't get to write the final chapter. A man like Bob Belden, a jazz warrior, or a creator of the highest order, wonderful person, friend. Why does he leave at the age of 58? That's just the way it is. We have to accept it. But it's hard to accept the passing of some people, and it saddens me to think about Bob. I've known him since the early 90s. I was writing for Jazz Times Magazine at the time. I did a Miles Davis tribute. Someone mentioned reaching out to Bob. I did, and uh, I discovered a man who knew a lot about Miles Davis and ended up producing a lot of reissues of Miles Davis material. He also knew the music of Blue Note Records. He knew every Blue Note record. He had every Blue Note record. Some outtakes as well. He loved Blue Note Records. He ended up working for Blue Note Records and recording for Blue Note Records. I think that's great that he was able to fulfill his destiny in terms of the music, the music that he loved, being involved in it, creating in so many varied ways. He wasn't uh, like your typical jazz artist, uh, a producer, a musician, a filmmaker. I mean, he was he was a lot of things. He had many talents, uh, a diverse talent that he was able to bring together because of his intelligence, his passion for what he did for life. He was a fun guy to be with, a funny guy, uh, an expert on many things outside of music, trivial things. I have every season of Hawaii Five O on Blu-ray discs. Thanks to Bob. He also shared music with friends, and Bob was also uh, a deep thinker. He had many friends in the intelligence community, and that may in part have been the catalyst for his being able to go to Iran, to play in Iran. I mean, this was a guy who couldn't find work in the United States, so what did he do? He put together a tour of Iran. He was the first American group to play there in more than three decades. He did that largely himself without the help of the U.S. government. It was a nonprofit uh, in between, but uh, it was mainly Bob Belden communicating and negotiating with the Iranis. He was part of a music festival. He toured the country. Fantastic response to the music over there perfect person to to bring our music to Iran and he had some really fascinating things to say about Iran and the people and our perception of them based on what the media is you know going to Bob's apartment was a, a musical a magical musical mystery tour he just had so much content I was working on a project a year ago I think for prestige records a history of prestige records and uh, I went to his apartment, he gave me, on a Blu-ray disc or two, every prestige session with every cover. He loved the music and spent his whole life chronicling, celebrating. Deep, deep love of Miles, as evidenced by his uh, reissue work as a producer and also a number of projects after that on his own. He's got a, a, a new recording coming out uh, on Chesky uh, with Wallace Roney and a bunch of other people playing the music of Miles, revisiting different framework. He's done that a number of times. He did Miles in India. He did, I think he did Miles in Spain. I mean, he's had so many different projects and perhaps that's, that's why He's never seen the type of success that certainly his talent deserved because hard to categorize a guy, how to pigeonhole a guy like this. It's very difficult. Well, you know, one sentence, what is he? Now, I'm lucky with my work, jazz video guy, kind of describes the whole thing very quickly. But how do you, how do you sum up a man like Bob Belden, a, a creator, a warrior, a man who lives a life of truth? 
a man who spends his life with a passion for what he loves and the people who create it. Bob Belden will not soon be forgotten in my world and we'd like to do another tune from the Golden Era of Miles Davis. This tune is called Milestone.
Stones, Joshua Redman, Carol Altahino, Kevin Hayes.